Welcome to Centre Church. We hope you enjoy this message recorded live from our Burgess Hill campus. So last week, uh, you, for those of you who are here, uh, we started a series of looking at Psalm 37, verses 3 to 7. And uh, I'm going to read it to start with. Uh, we'll, we'll get to know this passage really, really well over the next three weeks as we continue to go through it. Uh, but it'll be something that hopefully sticks with us. And it says this, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Now, last week, we, we kind of started in reverse order in looking at verse 7. And this challenge to be still before the Lord. Uh, again, not the, the, the context of what we're reading here is not about worship, and it's not about uh, declaring anything. It's not about prayer. It's about coming into God's presence, maybe doing all those things to start with, but then just being with the Lord, quieting our hearts, quieting our thoughts, allowing the Holy Spirit to come and be with us and be in our hearts in that time. It's not an easy thing, and I I believe it takes discipline to be still, to remove the distractions, to, to, uh, to stop the activities and give space to just be in His presence. And, uh, and then that leads to the, the next points that we looked at last week, where it's waiting patiently for Him. Again, we can be still, but then impatient that He's not doing something in that moment. That we, okay, I'm giving you five minutes, God. Why aren't you speaking? Why aren't you doing something? Why isn't there a, a bolt of lightning in my situation? Why isn't something happening in this moment? And God says, look, just wait and be patient for me. I will move in my time, in my way, And you need to just be patient for me. And then the third part of that is don't fret. Don't fret. Uh, And here David's talking about when when, uh, wicked people's schemes succeed. You know, there there can be a a temptation to get all excited that, God, why aren't you kind of dealing with that? Why isn't some justice happening? And and, and God says, look, don't fret. And so I think for all of us, we can say, don't fret when. And I said last week that that line could be filled in with whatever your life looks like right now. Don't fret when things aren't working out right now as you think they should, you know, when finances aren't maybe where they should be, or when health isn't, don't fret when. Why? Because we're waiting patiently for God. He's on the throne. He's moving, and we need to trust in Him. Now, this week, we're going to go back to the start of this passage. So, we're not reading it again in necessarily the order in which it's written, but the psalm, this particular psalm is written in each, each verse almost as a, as a unique thought, and so I think it's okay we jump around slightly in it. And so we have verse 3, and I'll read it again, first in the NIV, but then I'm going to read it in the Amplified, because sometimes the Amplified just draws out a bit more to what we see in the NIV. It says, trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Now, the Amplified put it this way, trust or rely, have confidence in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed securely on His faithfulness. In fact, I think the King James Version and the New King James and a number of other versions speak about actually feeding on His faithfulness versus enjoying safe pasture. Uh, so I think as believers, it's maybe slightly easier to understand it from that uh, way of understanding what was written. So we're going to look at this passage this morning. Trust in the Lord. It starts off with trust in the Lord, a statement used over and over in Scripture, isn't it? Probably the most famous we, we might think of when we heard that, that term, trust in the Lord with all your heart, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. We see that in Proverbs chapter 3. But this, this term, trust, and again, the Amplified Version uh, it, or translation, it, it, it just defines what that trust means. It, to rely, to, to have confidence in the Lord. Rely upon the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Have confidence in Him. And whether we realize it or not in this life, we have trust in something. Even the biggest cynic out there trusts in something. There's not a person out there that doesn't trust in something. And so when we think of our everyday lives, we trust in our, uh, for those who are working, we trust in our jobs. We rely upon job security. We hear, have that term, job security, correct? 
that you've got a good job. And if you've got that job, you've you got job security. The funny thing is, over the years, I'm 45 at this moment, uh, and over the 45 years, I've seen jobs that were really good jobs disappear because things have changed. You know, the rock solid job security, you get a job in that kind of industry, you've got a job for life. Ah, eh, not anymore. We see it in this country, right? In, in, in uh, manufacturing or coal mines or those kind of jobs that were around forever actually aren't around anymore. The, the job security, the sense of reliance upon a job, come and go. Uh, we, we can have a, a trust or a, a confidence in our families, our spouses, that, that they'll support us over the, the, the course of time. But the funny thing is, is you know, things change. I, I, I think this last year I've come to the realization of, of not having a dad. And you know, those moments where I, I always went to dad to talk about you know, those tricky things and what's your thoughts, dad? And the realization has hit me this last year, I don't have that in my life. And, you know, that's an impact of, I trusted in my dad that he would give wise counsel, that he would help me in the decisions I was making. Uh, But life moves on, right? That trust changes. Again, we can have a trust and a confidence in our health that if we eat well, if we if we're active and, and we, we treat our bodies right, we can have confidence that, you know, our bodies will, will hold the test of time. And you know what? Surprises happen. Things happen. Things change. We get older. Our bodies aren't what they used to be. Anyone say amen to that? <laughs> Government. We, we, we listen to the campaign promises. And oh, they sound so good. They're going to change. They're going to make Britain great again. And, you know, maybe some of those things are true. Some of those things don't happen. Uh, we, we, we put our trust <clears throat> and we vote because we trust what they're saying to a certain extent. One more, the police. We, we, they, they, we trust that they'll uphold the law. And there's always that, that great feeling of disappointment when, something, when, a, when police break the law. You know, and, and we've seen that over this past year happen. The problem is in this life, in this world... There are, there are uh, a reality that we need to understand is that things of this world are temporary. It, it, nothing stays the same. Nothing is constant all the time. And so we're living in a world that is temporary. Everything's temporary. We also live with a reality that not one of us is perfect. Not the, when we think of all the things that we are trusting and the people we're trusting, no one in that whole picture is perfect. We also have people and institutions and governments that will let us down over time. There's a reality that is the, that is the truth. However, there's a big however here. There is good news to my message, and it isn't that all is meaningless. But there is one that we can trust. You see, what we're seeing in Scripture here is trust in the Lord. Why? In Him is the fullness of life. He's one who never changes uh, do you know, we have a God there that does not change. He is the same, the Bible says, yesterday, today, and forever. He is not like a government who comes in with one promise and does something different. What He says He will do. He is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's everywhere present. He's able to work in every single situation we can possibly imagine. He's the great Creator. He's the great I Am. And God said, look, trust in Me. We put our trust in all sorts of other things that fail. And yet God said, look, trust in me. Can I just say, I want us to think about this. We were created to trust in Him. We were not created to trust in the things of this world. We were created to have a reliance upon Him. We were created with a dependency upon Him. That's how He created us to be. And so when we fall outside of that, when we say, look, I'm going to trust in something different, we fall short. We get discouraged, we get disillusioned, we fret, we fear, we worry, we have all the anxieties that come with this world because the world cannot be trusted, but God can be. And so again, we have this encouragement to us, trust in the Lord, to fully rely upon Him, to have confidence in Him with our finances, with our families, with our health, with our jobs, with our security, with everything that would concern us, we just trust in Him. We have confidence and we, we, we rely upon Him to do what only He can do. 
How much of our lives are in our control? So little. Correct? We only choose our responses most, lot, most of the time. It's just our response to what is going on around us already. God says, look, just trust in me. You don't need to have all the answers. You just need to trust in the one who does. Right? You need to rely upon the one who does. It's in trusting in God that we find peace and rest for our souls because we were created to live in that space. You see, it's in that point of, of coming to that place of trusting in Him and relying upon Him that actually we live life to the full. Why would I worry when God's in control? Why, why would I spend my night uh, you know, churned up and fretting and, and going down that road when I know God's in control? I don't need to... I, I can sleep well when I know He's on the throne and I'm choosing to put my trust in Him and not on self-reliance. He leads us into that space. Now, the passage goes on. It says, trust in the Lord. Do good. Trusting in God leads us to this, doing good. Or we could say it in other words, to say or do right things. You see, when we trust in ourselves and when we trust in our own understanding, when we trust in our, our own uh, context of, of what we have, we will work out of that. And so when things don't go our way, we will work from our old nature to try to fight our way, whatever that looks like. Now, when we trust in God, He leads us to display His character in the situations we're facing, to do good, to do what is right according to what he says is right, not what we think is right. I think regardless of what it is, to trust in God and to do what is right will often be, I would say 99.9% .9 will often be what we would not necessarily think to be what we would normally do. I've discovered in my life that over and over, God leads us upon a path that is not our old nature, but is upon a path that is reflecting his heart. As an example, we trust in God with our finances. God says, trust in me with your finances. I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Okay, I'm trusting in him with my finances. God says, look, I want you to be generous with the people in need. Okay, hold on, God. I am needing to protect what I've got to, to make sure I can pay the bills. Okay, I, I actually, when I do the math, what I earn and what comes out, and I, I don't think I can afford to be generous and give to anyone right now. I can't even support the church. I, I can't give. That's not wise. God said, are you trusting me or are you trusting in your finances? Are you trusting the bank balance or are you trusting what I say? Because I say, look, if you want to see what I can do, then I want you to give. My economy works differently. Trusting in me with your finances means you're going to be giving. You're going to be generous. You're going to be releasing. You're not going to be storing up, but you're, you're going to be instruments of seeing others touch through your lives. But it also means you're going to be honest and you're going to be ethical with your dealings. You're going to be, you're going to be uh, living according to what we should do with our finances. Trusting God with our identity, insecurities. If I'm going to say, God, who I am is who you say I am. Do you know what? He can lead us then to the place of being a servant because it's not about us anymore. I don't need to find my security in a title or in a position or in what other people think of me. If I'm trusting in God with who He says I am, then I can be the servant and I can take on the role of humility because it doesn't matter what the world around me says or thinks. I find my security in what He says. I trust in Him. I trust His word over my life, over what other people say. If I trust Him with my, my health, I don't need to live in fear because He's a look, I am the healer. I, I am the one who's over everything. I don't need to, to live in a state of anxiety. If I trust God with, uh, with, with anything in my life, whatever it is, it will always lead to an outward action that reflects His heart. I, we see the same thing in James, but it worded differently. Faith without works is dead. Trusting without doing what He, he calls us to do is, is not trusting at all, is it? If we're trusting in God, then our trust is reflected by what we do. Correct? It's reflected. It has to be. Now, 
These are a progression of thoughts. We trust in the Lord. We do what is right according to His eyes. We do good. And we dwell in the land. What does it mean to dwell in the land? It's, it's the same word actually that we have, the word tabernacle. It's, it's we're here, we're presencing ourselves in the land. You know, you and I are on mission. We're created to bring His kingdom to earth as it is in heaven. We're created with a mission. And so when we give our lives to Jesus, we put our trust in Him, we do what is right, we are to be here representing Him and dwell in the land. We're, we're to live in the land. We're to represent Him in the land. The Apostle Paul talked about being Christ's ambassadors. Jesus referred to it as being salt and light in this world. To dwell in it. To be in it. You know, again, I think the church over the years have fallen foul to the, the view that we're just waiting until Jesus comes back. You know, we're just waiting. We're just going to bunker down until Jesus comes back. Do you know what God says? No, you're called to be a light today. To dwell. To make difference. Over this period of time, I've read a fair bit different books. And one of the books that challenged me was the founder of uh, the International Tr Christian Chamber of Commerce. And uh, the book's titled Unlimited Business. And uh, I found it quite an interesting read because it's talking about business and it's talking about faith in business. And uh, to me, the guy who wrote the book and the guy who founded this movement that uh, Robin and Ruth are very much a part of uh, demonstrated what it looks like to dwell as a believer in the business world. What does it mean when faith and our trusting God is in the center of our actions in the business world. I mean, he's, again, looking at purely from the business. And the miracles he saw in business. And the miracles they saw in influencing and bringing change in governments around the world. And, and the voice into difficult situations as God's kingdom is represented. As these people, businessmen, people of influence in society, trust in God, do what is right, and dwell. Not keep it to themselves, not live in a little community separated from society, but dwell in the land. You and I are called to dwell in the land. We're called to dwell in Burgess Hill and Hassocks and, and Hayward's Heath and the areas that we live. We're called to dwell. We're told to make influence, to, to represent Christ. That's why we're here. We're not here just to do this. We're here to dwell, to represent Him. We, we occupy until He comes again. Correct? Seeing what it looks like. When Jesus is here, we are that to the world. Now the closing of this passage, it talks about the blessing for each of us as we trust in the Lord, do what is right, and dwell representing His presence. What does it say? It says, we feed securely on His faithfulness, or we enjoy safe pasture. Do you know what? When we follow what God has for us, when we are trusting in Him, when we're living out our life as He has called us to, do you know what? We get a front row seat in seeing His faithfulness. Can I say there's something very powerful about seeing God answer our prayers? When seeing God do what only God can do. I tell you, if you're going to feed on anything that will nourish your soul, that will give you perseverance, is when you see miracle after miracle after miracle in your life as you trust Him instead of relying upon yourself. There's something about it that gives us a buoyancy in our faith when we know our God's on the throne. And so when we're going through a difficulty, do you know what? I just have to look back a little bit in my past and I see over and over God's faithfulness. And I can feed off that for the things I'm facing. There's something that fills and nourishes our soul when God is at work in our lives. But can I just tell you, it's a, it's a, it's a requirement that we trust in Him and we do what He calls us to do. You see, sometimes we want to see God's faithfulness, but we're not obedient to what He's saying. Or we're not really trusting Him. And so we think, God, where, where are you? And He's saying, where are you? What are you trusting in at this moment? The decisions you're making are based upon what you see, not upon what I say. Or upon my word. Or upon what it is I'm leading you into. He is faithful. The Bible says He is faithful and He is true. We're called to trust in Him. And we're to do what is right. You know, these are the characters of God. He is faithful and He always does what is right. He is faithful and true. And we're to trust and to do what is right. His hand is always at work in our lives. And can I just say, this feeds us, this encourages us, and it spurs us on for the things that we're going through. Do we want to see the miracles of God? Absolutely. Absolutely. But it requires us to come to the table of trust.
Where are we looking this morning? Where are you looking this morning? I, I, I tell you what, in my walk with God, I've been a, a follower of Jesus since I was a child. And do I, can I say, it's always, I, I am always being challenged to keep trusting in Him. Can I just say, by default, my mechanism is always to trust in me. I don't think I'm alone in this. I've had about 40 years experience of learning that by default, I always will turn to myself and to what I think I can do than to Christ. And so it's a reminder. I know there's believers in here who, I mean, you've been believers longer than I've been alive, and maybe more so. But the fact is this morning, we need to be reminded again of whatever we're going through, to trust in Him. And in trusting Him, we do what He calls us to do, and then we live in that space where we see His kingdom come as we dwell in the space that we're in today. Thank you for watching this week's message. For any more information, or to find out more of what we do as a church, you can contact us at info at centerchurch.uk or check out our website at www.centre-church.uk.